Time really does fly. It's already been a week since Starship Flight 10, the most successful mission SpaceX has ever flown. That milestone has only fueled even more anticipation for Flight 11, set to fly with Ship 38, the last Block 2 vehicle ever built. And with the recent rapid progress at Starbase, the next flight could happen sooner than anyone expects. So, when exactly is the next launch? And what makes this flight so special? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Yes, it looks like SpaceX has done it again, rewriting its own legendary history with Starship Flight 10. Just a few months ago, they faced three consecutive Starship failures on Flight 7, 8, and 9. Every launch seemed to bring a new technical problem, some so serious that $50 million vehicles literally blew up in midair, leaving engineers scrambling to fix the next one. But with Flight 10, all that hard work finally paid off. SpaceX didn't just conquer the challenges of building the largest, most complex spacecraft in the world, they also won the hearts of partners and fans alike. It's hard not to think back to Falcon 1's three early failures between 2006 and 2008, when the company was on the brink of bankruptcy. Elon Musk had to borrow money everywhere just to make a fourth attempt. Had that flight failed, we might never have seen SpaceX rise to where it is now, and Musk probably wouldn't be the richest person in the world. Instead, success came. That breakthrough led to a $1.6 billion NASA contract for ISS resupply missions, a foundation for the SpaceX we know today. With Flight 10 behind us, all eyes are now on Flight 11. We are hoping for another success, maybe even bigger, since this will be the final Starship Block 2. Every mission it carries could bring surprises we haven't seen before. But before we go any further, everyone's asking the same thing. When is the next launch? Back when the Massey site was operational, SpaceX would perform static fires for the Starship upper stage there, while the Super Heavy booster was tested at the launch pad. This setup allowed for a much faster schedule. With a new flight potentially ready just four to five weeks after the previous one, if no issues arose. Now, with Massey site being upgraded for Starship version 3, all testing for both stages is done at OLM Pad 1. Upper stage tests also require modifications to the OLM, a process that can take a full week just to disassemble and reassemble. Because of this, Flight 11 is likely 1.5 to 2 months away, which puts the launch in the latter half of October. This pace is both practical and strategic. A launch in October keeps the schedule steady without rushing increasing the chances of success, just like Flight 10, which had nearly three months of prep time. All of this also sets the stage for Flight 12, the first of the version 3 starships expected in December. That milestone won't just maintain momentum, it'll satisfy the anticipation of everyone eager to see the next generation of starship take flight. However, while that may be Musk's broad estimate, the current pace suggests Flight 11 could actually happen sooner, maybe in early October. Let's take a closer look at the progress so far. Ship 38 has already completed its cryogenic testing, and Booster 17 has also passed cryo tests. But interestingly, Booster 15 seems like a stronger candidate. It was previously used on Flight 8, and could very well be assigned to this mission. Either way, the hardware is clearly moving in the right direction. At this stage, the only major step left is a static fire before moving on. B-15 still has its engines, though a few might need replacement. It's currently stored inside Mega Bay 1, while B-17, despite reportedly having its full set of engines, has been sitting in the rocket garden for months without much activity. Meanwhile, engines have been delivered to Mega Bay 2, where preparations for Ship 38 are making steady progress. As of the morning of August 27th, Ship 38 had even received its second aft flap, a key milestone that shows it's nearly ready for the next round of testing. All signs suggest the hardware itself is getting close to flight readiness. But there's another critical factor, the launch pad. Flight 10 was a powerful high-stress test, and the orbital launch pad took a heavy beating. Systems like the booster, quick disconnect, and the ship quick disconnect appear to have been impacted by the sheer force of the engines blasting directly onto them. Repairs are already underway and are expected to take about another week. In the meantime, SpaceX has also been testing the chopsticks, lifting, lowering, and catching motions to make sure everything is fully operational again. Once the refurbishment is complete, Booster 15 will likely be rolled out to the launch pad for a new static fire test. After that, 
it'll head back to the production site for a full inspection and the installation of its hot staging ring. At the same time, the ship's test stand and the modified ship quick disconnect will be reattached to the orbital pad, paving the way for static fire tests of Ship 38. Just like previous campaigns, the ship could go through two rounds of static fire before moving forward. If everything goes smoothly, Ship 38 will then return to Mega Bay 2 for final checkouts, payload installation, and flight safety system integration. All these steps point to a timeline of about one month. At this pace, it's not impossible that Flight 11 could launch as early as the beginning of October. And just like Musk said after Starship Flight 9, launch cadence for the next three flights will be faster, at approximately one every three to four weeks. That would mean back-to-back -back launches, something SpaceX has proven it can handle and might have already achieved with Flight 10, if not for the Ship 36 delay. Still, it may be wise to temper expectations. After all, Flight 10 was a major milestone that took months of preparation. It wouldn't be surprising if SpaceX took a slightly more cautious approach this time, making sure every detail is perfect before committing to the next launch. For that reason, mid-October feels like a more realistic target, a balance between speed and reliability. Personally, though, I'm betting on October 24th, since SpaceX often favors launches in the final week of the month. What about you? When do you think Flight 11 will launch? Drop your guesses in the comments, let's see who gets it right. It's not just the launch date that's drawing attention, the objectives for Flight 11 are just as ambitious. After the success of Flight 10, many expect SpaceX to raise the bar even higher. The company has already shown that Starship can advance rapidly, and now it seems ready to push the limits further. For the Super Heavy Booster, one key area will be reusability. By flying Booster 15 again, SpaceX will likely continue testing high-angle re-entry profiles to refine landing techniques. And, if conditions allow, meaning the booster isn't too damaged during descent, a full catch with Mechazilla could finally be on the table. So far, SpaceX hasn't nailed a successful landing in a true reusability configuration. On Flight 9, for example, Booster 14 was reused but failed during re-entry. The steep angle and stress on internal fuel lines caused a structural break in fuel mix, leading to an explosion. This time, though, SpaceX may go all in, aiming to land B-15 with Mechazilla. If they succeed, it would be a huge leap toward making Starship fully reusable. But before any of that, there's still one critical issue, engine reliability. In Flight 10, one of the center engines shut down completely right after liftoff. The booster still carried on, but every loss of thrust adds unnecessary risk, and SpaceX will need to fix that moving forward. Even more concerning was the unexpected explosion in the engine bay later in the mission. The root cause hasn't been officially confirmed, but many believe it may have been linked to something as simple as the engine's cooling system. During flight, propellants that vaporize inside the lines must be vented to prevent dangerous pressure and temperature buildups. Starship has two vent ports at the base of its aft flaps, one for liquid oxygen and one for methane. A crack in one of these Raptor chill-down lines, likely the LOX vent, may have created the initial leak, damaging the flap in the process. After that, a large amount of gas appeared to vent from the methane port. With the outlet path possibly blocked, pressure built up, then suddenly burst out in a jet of gas. Moments later, a bright flash erupted, then boom! The explosion ripped through Starship's skirt, scattering debris. The most likely scenario is that methane and oxygen from both vents mixed together and ignited when exposed to the extreme plasma environment of re-entry. The deeper reason is that SpaceX has been pushing Starship right to its limits by deliberately removing some heat shield tiles near the windward side to expose insulation. They allowed plasma to burn into vulnerable areas around the aft flaps. That damage may have compromised the venting system, triggering the chain of events that led to the blast. This minor incident also gives us a clear hint. If SpaceX wants to push Starship even further, the vehicle will need to be fully equipped with ceramic heat shield tiles. Only then can it survive re-entry from true orbital altitudes without risking another explosion. With proper protection in place, the ship could safely make it back through Earth's atmosphere, and a controlled splashdown in the ocean would be the expected outcome. Alongside these upgrades, SpaceX will also look to build on the successes from Flight 10. The controlled flip maneuver and the two-engine landing burn are expected to be repeated, giving the team more confidence in these critical procedures. Another key focus is the final landing of Super Heavy. In Flight 10, 
the booster hit the water too hard and was destroyed. This time, engineers may fine-tune the landing sequence to achieve a gentler, more controlled splashdown, with the ultimate goal of keeping the booster intact long enough to gather more post-flight data. As for Starship itself, specifically Ship 38, the mission begins with liftoff. While Flight 10 finally marked a clean ascent to space, the three flights before it were plagued with major issues. SpaceX will certainly want to prove that those failures are behind them. Consistency during ascent is going to be a big part of showing Starship can be trusted. Once in orbit, the next challenge is payload deployment. Flight 10 demonstrated an early version of this by releasing eight dummy Starlink satellites on a suborbital trajectory. For Flight 11, expectations are much higher. Many believe Starship could carry twice as many, up to 20 satellites, this time simulating Starlink version 3 units, which would total around 40 tons. And instead of a suborbital release, they might actually deploy them from a real orbit. Since this is the last mission of the Starship version 2 design, SpaceX may well attempt some bold, unpredictable steps. Moves like this bring the vehicle closer to its real purpose, delivering satellites, cargo, and eventually humans to orbit. And you know what? SpaceX's victory with Starship Flight 10 ended up being a pretty embarrassing moment for Blue Origin. Their original plan was to launch the company's reusable New Shepard rocket on August 23rd, carrying a batch of suborbital science experiments from Launch Site 1 in West Texas, just one day before SpaceX's big flight. But suddenly, Blue Origin announced a delay. On social media, they wrote, We are scrubbing today's NS-35 launch. The team encountered an issue related to the booster's avionics, new launch target forthcoming. At first, it almost looked like a PR move, like they didn't want to risk being overshadowed by Starship's headlines. If New Shepard had flown successfully right before Flight 10, Bezos' company could have stolen a slice of the spotlight. That kind of timing game is a classic PR trick in competition. But when August 26th came around, Blue Origin had to push it back again, saying, We're standing down on today's NS-35 launch attempt to continue to troubleshoot an issue with the booster's avionics. We're determining the next launch opportunity. And just like that, the plan collapsed. Once again, Blue Origin fell behind while SpaceX surged ahead. It's also hard not to see this as part of the ongoing billionaire rivalry. Years ago, Jeff Bezos was the big name everywhere, while Elon Musk was just the eccentric engineer obsessed with code and rockets. But success after success flipped the script, and today, Forbes doesn't even give Bezos a chance to stand ahead of Musk anymore. 